It surely can be claimed by many that in an industrialized and technologically expanding global space, it certainly isn't overstating the case to simply say that, at global stage, fast-paced agricultural productivity may not amount to so much great returns, but for a nation like ours, whose two-thirds of the population find place in rural settlements, agriculture still stands as a significant step towards poverty reduction and its 20% contribution to the gross domestic product isn't a small margin. Imagine, in ways so empowering to say the least, the agricultural sector reigns supreme in its impactful extreme to employ close to more than half of Zambia's labor force. But unfortunately, it should be said without shame, the agricultural sector isn't yet at its prime with the surging abundance of fresh fruits to claim. And it's justified for you to ask how so well, like never before, climate change is waging a war that has taken a toll on our weather patterns compromising how we grow and pushing us towards a gradual reduction in food supply, leaving our food reserve agency witnessing the nightmare of an unstable food security. And such occurrences have brought times so tough and as if that's not enough, with every passing day into the hard grip of natural disasters, we watch prospects of a growing economy sink. And I can't help but think, if as a nation, we fail to fly past an inordinate imbalance in our over-reliance on rain-fed agricultural growing circles, food insecurity will for a long time remain an enemy holding a gun to our heads. I mean, why remain non-mechanized in our agricultural practice when Zambia is a country swelled fat with numerous water resources like rivers, lakes and a good supply of underground water that can be prudently exploited for irrigation systems that can guarantee a constant supply of both domestic and export crops and in hard times brought by natural disasters or unstable weather patterns there's room to be resilient by shifting the focus and choosing to grow crops that are drought resistant so let's not be much too laid back as to think our hands are too frail to carry each building block to reconstruct our ideal Zambian dream. There is always that one great place to start and with pure academic intellect and heart, like art, we can begin to foster more broad-based inclusive economic growth by collectively seeking ways to diversify the economy through the expansion of the agricultural sector so as to go beyond our over-reliance on copper exports, primarily because it is such efforts that will give the disadvantaged majority the means to grow some financial muscle to seize living under the poverty line. Sick to build with a government that doesn't reduce the worth of hardworking farmers to the size of their produce and the weight of their market surplus because it is such tendencies that later grow into poorly justified reasons for the delayed delivery of subsidized farming inputs as provided for under the farmer input support program because what's the point of giving out farming inputs halfway through the fast pest wheels of a new agricultural season while on the other hand being constrained by the accumulation of arrears or to agro dealers in shaky e-voucher system transactions but regardless our planetary home gave us land and seed to sow with our sweat and muscle to let us sustainably maintain all our green tomorrows imbued in the fertility of our soils. Because the painting brush to draw our future and the ideal Zambian dream is in the blistered palms of hardworking men and women in our local farms. And that will only be realized by an informed general public and a government with well thought out budget allocations even amid a debt crisis, coupled with the right dose of patriotic boldness to take the first step.